Hi everybody, this is Addie Gayoso. I'm an educator at the National Museum of Women in the Arts in Washington, DC. And today I'm super excited to share with you a book format that we call Codex. I wanna to talk to you about a few examples of Codex books, share some images with you, and then show you how to make your very own using materials you can find around the house or even outside. So what is a Codex book? Well, you may not be familiar with the term, but you are certainly familiar with the book itself. Codex is just a fancy way to describe a bound book. Most books we interact with today, whether hardcover like this one or softcover, are bound. And the main sort of components of a, of a Codex book are a cover and a spine. And the cover and the spine are bound to the pages on the inside. They keep the pages intact and secure. So that's basically what a codex book is. So let's see a couple of examples of codex books in our museum's artist book collection. This first one is a super cool example. It's actually one of my favorite artworks in our collection. It was a work made by Mirella Bentivoglio, an Italian artist. If you look closely at this book, you'll notice that the pages of the book are made out of smashed cans. Morella Bentivoglio is really well known for using non-traditional and surprising materials in her artworks, and this is no exception. Here's she's using cans, soda cans for instance, that she's collected from the streets of Italy. Rather than them being thrown away, she's found an interesting way to repurpose them. And then she's bound and attached these pages together using an iron cover. So it's a really sturdy book. Pretty cool, right? This book is sort of in honor of another book that was created in the 1930s by futurist artists. Uh, and those books, those early futurist books, were actually also made out of recycled materials. The futurist used cans, like sardine cans and cigar tins, to create their own examples of books. So Marilla Bentivoglio in her creation of this book is thinking about those earlier examples of artist books. The title, Lito Latin, is actually a nod to the company that made tin cans in Italy in the 1930s, the Lito Lata company. So this is a cool sort of acknowledgement of former, uh, former company and books that have been made in the past using recycled materials. Our second example is by Brenda Watson. Again, it's another example of a codex book. We see here on the top image a cover, and we see a spine at left, um, sort of that black um, area that covers um, the wing of the cover. And this book is called How to Attract Birds. Brenda Watson is particularly interested in birds migration and the idea that uh, for many humans, um, flight is sort of an equivalent to freedom. It's almost a metaphor for freedom. So this book actually sort of asks us to think about that idea of, of flying and freedom. And because she's thinking about these ideas and birds are the subject of her book, she's created a, a form that references what's going on inside. We see that the the cover is not a traditional rectangle. It actually looks like wings, right? And on the inside, we see various birds that we might find in rural and urban environments. For Watson, she's thinking a lot about how she had her own pattern of migration. She grew up in a small Canadian town. It was a farming and a logging community, and she moved or migrated to a, a more urban setting. So this book is as much about birds migration as it is about human migration. Like Marilla Bentivoglio, Brenda Watson is using some really interesting materials for her book. The cover of this book, sort of we see here, is sort of the black area on the left side of that top image. It's actually made out of rubber. So she's not using paper like most uh, books are made, made out of. She's really trying to explore interesting and different kinds of materials. To that end, uh, and as a transition, I'd like to show you how to make your own codex book using some non-traditional materials. So let's gather our materials so that we can get started. To make what we are calling a rubber band book, we're going to need a few materials. First, we need five sheets of eight and a half by 11 copy paper. We need <clears throat> one sheet of cardstock. If you don't have cardstock at home, you can just use another sheet of copy paper. But ideally, this one sheet of paper is going to be a little bit more sturdy and heavy than, than your other pages. That's because this will actually become the cover of our book and we want it to protect the pages on the inside. 
We need one rubber band, at least about three inches long uh, when you measure it out. We need a stick a chopstick or a pencil that will be attached to the book. So I actually went outside before I started this video and I picked up a stick from my backyard, but you can also use chopsticks if you have those or even a pencil or another writing utensil that you can find around the house. You'll need a ruler. We'll need a bone folder, which is a specialized art tool I can explain. If you do not have a bone folder, don't worry. We can use other materials. We can use something like a plastic spoon or even your fingernail. Basically, we need a tool that is hard but dull that will allow us to create nice, crisp folds. We need a writing implement so that we can make a few tick marks on our book. We need a hole punch or scissors. And that's it. So before we get started with the making, I wanted to share with you a couple of resources. The museum has a really wonderful collection of lessons, and it's part of this series called Art Books and Creativity Curriculum. It's a series of 14 artist book lessons, and it includes seven different um, book making activities, one of which is this book that we're going to be making today. I've also included the URL for the rubber band journal book instructions, which are on the curriculum's website, and we have recently launched a new online exhibition series called The Book as Art, and there's a particular exhibition that's really cool called Codex Curiosities. So if you're interested in learning more about codex formats and you want to see some more examples of books in our collection, definitely check out that resource. Okay, I am going to get started with the making now. So what we'll want to do is grab your sheets of paper. And what we're going to do first, we're going to make the inside of the book. We're going to make the pages first. What we need to do um, to create our pages is we're going to hold our paper horizontally like this, and we're just going to fold the pages in half. And we're going to do this with all of our pages. I would recommend you fold the pages individually, though. If you fold them all together, you don't get a crisp fold, which is really important. So this is where our bone folder comes in. As I said, if you don't have a bone folder, you can use something like a plastic spoon um, or even your fingernail. What, basically what we're using this for is to create a nice crisp fold. And we're going to basically, every time we fold our paper with our hands, we're going to follow up by rubbing this tool, whichever you find, uh, along the edge of that fold to make it nice and crisp. So here is what we're going to do. I'll notice that I'm just running it along that fold. So we're going to do this same process four more times to fold all of our internal pages of our book. So we're using five pages of copy paper. You can really use as many pages as you'd like for your book. I just like to choose five because that gives us in total 20 pages inside our book. So basically what you do is whatever number of single sheets of paper you choose to use for your rubber band book, just multiply that by four and that's how many pages we'll actually have inside our book. So now that I've folded all of my pages, what we want to do is actually nest our pages inside one another. So we call this a valley fold in bookmaking. And what I want to do is basically add each page inside the next page, putting all the valley folds upward. Nice little stack of pages here. Straighten them out. Great. Here we have the inside of our book. Now what we want to do is take our cardstock or our heavier paper, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold this in half. And again, we are going to use our tool, whatever that is, to create a crisp fold. And now what we're going to do is open up our cover and place our pages inside. We have a little booklet here, which is great, but an important part of a codex is that the pages inside are secure. And so that's where we take our next steps in order to do that. 
there are a couple of ways we can go about binding our book together. I will show you two ways. One, the first one is if you have a hole punch, which I do have. There's another way we can do this if you do not have a hole punch and you only have scissors at home. So the first method is using a hole punch. This is where you need a ruler. And what I like to do is I like to measure, I'm putting my ruler against the very top edge of my book, leaving a little bit of space. And I'm going to just put a little bit of a dot. I'm measuring two inches in from each end, and I'm putting a dot. So I'm doing that on both sides. One, two. So I basically created little dots that are measured two inches in. It's a little hard to see. Got it? You can see that, right? Okay. That's kind of where our marker is for where we're going to punch the holes. I'm using a three hole punch, any hole punch will do. And I'm going to try my best to line up that two inches to where the hole punch will actually make a hole and create a hole, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> there we go. It's a little bit hard to do. I will say you need to have a little bit of pressure because you're going through a lot of sheets of paper. So what you should have at the end are uh, two holes, one on each side, each measuring about two inches from the end of your book. Okay. Now what we need is a rubber band. I, uh, I don't have a lot of rubber bands at home, but I found this one in my grocery bag. It was attached to some produce, so that worked out really well and I was able to repurpose it. What you wanna do next is we're going to hold our rubber band, sort of pinch it, hold the end like this, and I'm going to thread my rubber band and through one of those holes I just created. So now we kind of have a rubber band sticking through that first hole. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chopstick, or my regular stick or my pencil, and I'm going to thread that through one end of rubber band, okay? And then from the back side, I'll call this the front side, I have my stick. From the back side, I'm going to pull that rubber band, and this may require a second set of hands. I'm pulling that rubber band taut, and then I am going to thread it through that other hole that I created. This is a little challenging, so sometimes it's helpful to have a second set of hands. So I'm going to pull that rubber band through that other hole, and then I am going to thread that stick through the other side of the rubber band. And there we go. We have a bound book using a rubber band and a chopstick. If you do not have a whole bunch, we can use scissors instead, and I'll show you how to do that next. The cool thing about this book format is that if you want to add more pages to your book or if you need to remove some pages, it's very easy to take the binding apart, take the pages out or put pages in, and then rebind the book, okay? All right, so let's do this one more time. I am going to simply use the inside of my book because we've already created that. Um, so if you do not have a hole punch, the other way you can make your cover is you're going to start the same way. You're going to fold your cover in half. Use your bone folder. Okay. So the first few steps are the same. We're going to pretend these don't have hole punches in them. I'm just going to recycle this paper, but you're going to take your pages that have just been folded and you're gonna nest them inside the book like you did the last time, right? Just like we did the last time. And then this time, instead of using a hole punch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use scissors to cut notches out of the spine or out of the edge of that fold. So again, I am going to measure, use my ruler to measure about two inches. And I'm gonna put a little dot at two inches from one end and two inches from the other end. So there are those inch, or the, the two inch marks again. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm basically going to 
just cut a little triangle out of the paper. You have to hold the paper pretty tight so it doesn't wiggle on you. So I'm just cutting a little triangle around that mark I just made. See that? I just made a little triangle, okay? So I'll show you, I can draw it for you so you can see. So I have, basically where that tick mark was, I just drew a little triangle so you can see a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna hold my pages tight. And then I'm going to cut out the triangle. So what that does is that creates two little holes for us on the cover and on the inside of the book so that we can thread our rubber band through. So the next step is we're going to thread the rubber band again. The way I would do it this time is I would actually keep my book, you're gonna keep your book open. And I'm sort of, I have the inside facing me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread my rubber band through the hole while my book is open. Okay, so we see that there. There it is on the inside. And then again, I'm gonna put my stick on the outside. So I'm going to, I actually am using a stick I found outdoors. So I'm going to thread my stick. I want the stick to be on the outside, like I said, so that it's vis visible. It's an interesting visual element of my work. So I have my stick and I have threaded it through one side of the rubber band. And then I'm gonna go back to the inside of the rubber band. Or I'm sorry, inside of the book. And then I'm going to stretch my rubber band and pull it through that other hole that we created, that little triangular hole. This is the most challenging part of this bookmaking process, I will say. Okay, so I pulled it through that other triangle we created on the spine, and then I'm going to thread it over the stick like that. And so now what I have is just another way of binding a book using a rubber band and a stick. And in this case, the rubber band binding is actually runs through the center of the book. There you go. You can try both of these techniques out, give one a try, you might like one more than the other. But as I said earlier, the great part about this particular format is you can adjust the number of pages in your book. You can always switch out your stick if you want to add a different stick. If you want to add a, you use a pencil instead or a another writing implement, you can do that. But it's a cool way to create a simple bound book and you've created your own codex. So I hope that you enjoyed this and that you will create your own codex books moving forward. Uh, thanks for joining me and get to making. Bye.